Hello everyone, welcome back to my simple and easy to understand SPM principal account on video series. Have you come across pinjaman questions and it contains words like tarikh, matang, ansuran, bayaran, balik? We can normally see these in soalan pelarasan penyata kewangan where you are requested to prepare PKK and Apur. How would you answer this type of questions? Is it liability semasa or liability bukan semasa? How would you know? Before we continue for our discussion today, I'm going to call penyata kedudukan kewangan as PKK and account peragangan dan untung rugi as Apur. Okay, let's start. Before we begin, let's get to the basics first. What is a liability? It's actually the money that you owe someone. Hutang kepada pihak ketiga. Example, hutang kepada pembekal, bank, atau sesiapa saja yang anda belum bayar duit. So that will appear as a liability in your PKK. Liability simply means hutang. But we do have two types of liability, right? Which is liability semasa and liability bukan semasa. How do we know how to categorize them? Liability semasa adalah di mana tempoh pembayaran balik hutang adalah kurang daripada satu tempoh perakonan atau setahun. Here, you would need to make the payment back within a year. Example, your account belum bayar and overdraft bank. Okay. Whereas, liability bukan semasa adalah di mana tempoh pembayaran balik hutang adalah lebih daripada satu tempoh perakonan atau setahun. For an example, your pinjaman and garai janji. Okay, let's say for an example, if you take pinjaman for 100,000 ringgit, it's almost impossible for you to pay back within a year, right? So since it takes such a long time to pay back the pinjaman, which is more than a year, we categorize them as liability bukan semasa. But not always. It depends on the question. Hmm. Now what does this actually mean? Let's go to the next slide. Here. Very simple. It's one of the most easiest type of pinjaman question. If we do get a question like this, where pinjaman diberi sebagai salah satu butir dalam soalan atau imbangan duga with no maklumat tambahan, what do we do? We would automatically categorize the pinjaman sebagai liability bukan semasa in PKK. Correct or not? Okay, this is the easy one. But what if there are maklumat tambahan for pinjaman? And what do some of these words mean? Let's see the first one. Tempoh atau tarikh matang. Tarikh pinjaman perlu dilangsaikan atau habis dibayar. Let's see, you. for an example, you took pinjaman for five years, starting from this year, 2021. Then, the tarikh matang is 2026, which is when you should complete the bayaran balik for the pinjaman. So that is what they call as tarikh matang, when you should complete, finish paying the pinjaman. Now let's see the next one. Bayaran balik. What is the bayaran balik? Bayaran balik is the tempo atau amount pinjaman yang perlu dibayar balik. Which you need to pay back depending on the question. Okay. Now, the final one. Ansuran. What does this mean? Amount pinjaman yang perlu dibayar balik untuk sebulan or setahun. Okay, here you need to take note. Eh? This ansuran does not include faedah atas pinjaman. Faedah atas pinjaman is when we are calculating the ansuran or amount bayaran balik without the faedah atas pinjaman. Now, why? Because faedah atas pinjaman adalah sejenis belanja. We do not include that when we are calculating a liability semasa or a liability bukan semasa. So, we do not have to include this faedah atas pinjaman. Okay, later you'll be able to see it clearly in the example of answering the questions. Now let's see a very simple contoh pengiraan on how to categorize liability semasa and liability bukan semasa. Okay. Let's say the tempo per accountan semasa where you are requested to prepare the apur and the PKK from the question eh, is from 1st of January 2020 till 31st of December 2020. If the amount and tarikh pembayaran balik falls within the next immediate tempo per accountan, which is 1st of January 2021 till 31st of December 2021, then the amount bayaran balik is categorized as liability semasa. Beyond that, any payment that needs to be made beyond 1st of January 2022 
the entire amount is a liability bukan semasa. Summary. Any amount that you need to pay in the next immediate tempo perakaunan, liability semasa. And anything which is beyond that, liability bukan semasa. Okay. Let's see an example of question. Okay, let's read the question together. Huh? ABC Perhat telah membuat pinjaman tanpa faedah RM60,000 daripada dana usahawan pada 1 Julai 2020. Pinjaman perlu dijelaskan secara ansuran bulanan selama 5 tahun. Ansuran pokok pinjaman untuk tahun kewangan berakhir 30 Jun 2021 telah dijelaskan sepenuhnya. Lengkapkan ruang jawapan di bawah untuk menunjukkan persembahan pinjaman di penyata kedudukan kewangan pada 30 Jun 2021. The first step is to determine the tempo perakaunan. Okay, langkah pertama, tentukan tempo perakaunan semasa. What is the tempo perakaunan semasa? Is 1st of July 2020 sehingga 30th of June 2021. How do I know this? It's already given in the question. You need to prepare the PKK pada 30th June 2021. So this is the akhir tempo perakaunan. If this is the akhir, then what's the beginning? The beginning is 1st of July 2020 till 30th of June 2021. Okay. It's not only for this type of questions you need to determine the tempo perakaunan. It's almost for all accounts type of question is important to determine the tempo perakaunan. Okay. So, let's go to the second step. Second step is tentukan jumlah pinjaman, 60,000 given in the question, dan tarikh pinjaman dibuat, 1st of July 2020. Okay, so but why is the tarikh pinjaman dibuat important? Because we need to know when to start paying back, correct or not? Normally, the date the pinjaman is received is when we need to start paying back unless it's mentioned as a different date in the question. So if there's nothing mentioned in the question, we are going to take it that the tarikh saya terima pinjaman adalah tarikh I am going to start paying back. Third step is to determine the answeran bayaran balik setahun. How do I get that? I'm going to take 60,000 and I'm going to divide by 5 years. How do I know it's 5 years? If that is also given in the question. Selama 5 tahun. So how much do you get per year? I get 12,000 per year. Okay. To explain on this, let's see the calculation table which I have prepared for your easy understanding. And here we are lucky in this question because the tare bayaran balik is the same as the beginning of the tempo perkawanan. Okay, you see, the beginning of my tempo perkawanan is 1 July 2020. My tare bayaran balik also starts at the same date. So it is easy for us to calculate the ansuran and how much needs to be paid back. Okay, so for the current year, 12,000 have been paid. How do I know this? It says so in the question. What does it say? It says that ansuran pokok pinjaman untuk tahun kewangan berakhir 30 Jun 2021 telah dijelaskan sepenuhnya. What does this mean? It means that for the tempoh perakaunan for this tahun kewangan from 1st of July 2020 until 30th of June 2021 berakhir pada 30 Jun 2021 ansuran telah dijelaskan. That means the 12,000 for this year has already been completed paid. Bukan lagi liability sebab sudah dibayar. So this 12,000, you cannot consider it as a liability anymore already because I've already paid it already. Okay, now. The second 12,000 here, it needs to be paid in the next immediate tempo perakaunan. The next tempo perakaunan starts on the 1st of July 2021 till 30th of June 2022. So this 12,000 adalah liability semasa and the balance which is to be paid after July 2022 which is 36,000 the balance that is categorized as liability bukan semasa kesimpulannya kalau hutang sudah dilangsaikan dalam tempoh perakaunan semasa ia bukan lagi liability jika hutang perlu dilangsaikan dalam tempoh perakaunan yang seterusnya, ia adalah liability semasa. Yang baki selepas tu, kesemuanya adalah liability bukan semasa. So here to fill up the columns here, my liability semasa is 12,000 and my liability bukan semasa is 36,000.
This one, remember, is not liability here because you have already made the payment in the current Tempo Prakanan. So it will no longer appear as your liability. Okay. Ready to go to the next example? Come. Let's go to the next example. Where is my mouse? Oh my god. Okay, we're gonna come. Now, my next example. Let's see the let's read the question together again. Pinjaman bank sebanyak 30,000 berkadar 2.35% setahun telah diterima pada 31 Mei 2020. Memandangkan moratorium telah dilaksanakan, bayaran balik pinjaman bermula 1 Ogos 2020 dan berakhir pada 31 Julai 2025. Perkara ini masih belum direkod dalam mana-mana buku. Okay now. This is a different type of question. Okay. But before we start, what is moratorium? It's where the banks allow you to pay the bank loan at a later date. For example, during the COVID-19 situation where many businesses were hit, the banks were helping by allowing a later payment date. Okay, so how do we know it's a later payment date? When did this guy get his pinjaman? He got his pinjaman on 31st of May. But when was he allowed to start paying back? 1st of August 2020. So here we cannot tell that, oh, the day that I got my pinjaman is the day I'm going to start paying back. And no, because the question is already telling that you're only going to start paying back on the 1st of August 2020. Dan berakhir pada 31 July 2025. Okay, so here, let's follow the same category steps as well as the previous question. Langkah pertama, what's my tempo perakonan? 1st June 2019 until 31st May 2020. This was actually given in the question, yeah? Okay, now, let's go to my second step. Tentukan jumlah pinjaman, 30,000, dan tarikh mula bayaran balik pinjaman, 1st of August 2020. Here, if you notice, the tarikh mula bayaran balik is not the same as the Tarikh mula tempoh perakonan ya. My tarikh mula tempoh perakonan is 1st of June. My tarikh mula bayar balik pinjaman 1st of August. So this will actually account for a bit of different type of calculation. Just a bit. Not very different. But later we will cover it in the calculation table ya. Okay. Then the third step. What's my third step? Tentukan tempoh bayaran balik. Okay, they gave the dates here. They say 1st of August 2020, then berakhir pada 31 July 2025. So how long is this? This is 5 years. Okay, let's go to the fourth step. Is to calculate the ansuran bayaran balik sebulan. Okay, so I take my 30,000 and I divide by 60 months. 5 years times 12 months, you get 60 months. How much do you get per month? I get 500. Okay. So here, I need to calculate the ansuran bayaran balik sebulan, not setahun. The previous question, I counted for setahun. But here, I'm calculating for sebulan. Why? Because of what I mentioned before this, where the tare bayaran balik, where's my tare bayaran balik? Okay, 1st of August 2020 is not the same as the tare permulaan of my tempo per accountan. So I cannot calculate per year because this doesn't constitute a year. Correct or not? So, let's go to the table that I've prepared for you all. Okay, let's see from our table. So, for the current tempo perkawanan, tiada ansuran bayaran balik yang telah dibuat. Correct? Because why? Because my current tempo perakanan is 1st of June 2019 until 31st of May 2020. But when did I start paying back? I only started paying back on the 1st of August. Does 1st of August fall within this tempo perakanan? Nope. It falls within the next tempo perakanan. Right? So in my tempo semasa, I did not make any payment at all. And the bayaran balik hanya bermula pada tempo perakanan yang seterusnya. Okay now. Let's go to tempo perakonan yang seterusnya. Any ansuran bayaran balik which falls within this tempo perakonan, we are going to categorize them as liabilities masa. But you see here, I don't start paying back on 1st of June. I'm only going to start paying back on 1st August 2020 until 31st of May 2021. 
this is 10 months. So what do I do? I'm going to take the 500 that I calculated here, sebulan, and I'm going to times with 10 months. Okay, this is 10 months here. Okay, and I'm going to get 5,000. These 5,000 is the one that I'm going to categorize sebagai liability semasa. Okay, but why why am I only taking up to 31st of May 2021? Because that's where your this tempo perakonan ends. This tempo perakonan is only up to 31st of May 2021. And anything which falls inside this tempo perakonan is the only thing that I can categorize as liability semasa. I cannot go beyond that. Nope. Okay, so... Up to 31st of May 2021 is 10 months, so I get 5,000. And these 5,000, I'm going to categorize as liability semasa. Okay, so what goes into liability bukan semasa? Everything else, meaning the balance. How much is my balance? I take the total pinjaman 30,000 and I minus with the 5,000, which I'm going to categorize as liability semasa. So I get the balance of 25,000. And this 25,000, I'm going to categorize as Liability bukan semasa. So, again, kesimpulan, amount yang perlu dibayar balik pada tempoh perakaunan yang seterusnya dikategori sebagai liability semasa and baginya sebagai liability bukan semasa. Okay. So, I hope this easy to understand video was helpful and please stay tuned for my next upcoming videos. And if you like this video, please make sure to turn the red subscribe button into grey and smash the like button. And if you want more tips on how to answer SPM Principe Prakanan questions or would like to attend my free coaching classes, please subscribe to my Telegram channel. I've shared the link in the description below. Thank you and see ya!